Hey everybody, welcome to uh, episode number two of Reading Smoke, The Next Generation with Phil Jones. We're about a minute or so early, so uh, we'll give everybody some time to catch up to us here. Make sure we give some time for, for folks to come in again. If you're uh, if you're interested in uh, adding to the conversation, go ahead and if you have comments or whatever, just put those in the comment section. I'll cover that again. Um, and uh, I'll definitely try, if you have a question or an idea about something, I'll definitely uh, try to get to that during the, the show today. And as we get started right here at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, that's uh, noon here at Pacific Time where I am. Uh, hello from Pocatello, Idaho. It's another beautiful day here. We've uh, really got a lot of sunshine, but we do have a lot of smoke. So all my brothers and sisters out there on the West Coast fighting those forest fires, Hey, keep it safe out there, and uh, I know that we're with you. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of tragedy going on on that on that coast, so um, just want everybody to stay safe and and know that uh, the nation's behind you. Same thing for all of our brothers and sisters down there on the Gulf Coast. A lot of flooding, a lot of rain with uh, Hurricane Sally. So uh, we're with you, and understand if you're not here today to tune in live. But hope you get a chance to see the the. Um, episode later. Hey, today we're going to uh, talk about um, basement fire and we're doing size ups and predicting. A lot of the posts lately have been about uh, predicting uh, what's going to happen with the fire from what we're seeing with the smoke, right? And so what we want to do is just reinforce not only why that we're doing that, but also some examples. So uh, as always, I like to give people a few minutes to get in. Here's my email and my uh, um, website. If you're interested in finding out about me or if you're interested in hiring me, just send me an email. I'll be out in a couple of week, weeks. We'll be out in uh, Florida at the Palm Coast to the fire department there to do some training on the art of reading smoke. And I look forward to that. It's uh, always nice to get out and touch base with people directly, even during these trying times. So. And we're going to have a really nice schedule for 2021. I'm looking forward to, to getting out there and uh, teaching again, teaching in person besides teaching online. But I really do like the teaching online. It's been fun to get this started. And I'm doing some other online projects as well. None of those are really public. But uh, just know where I'm out there uh, trying to keep the message going and, and uh, keep my skills set up for, for uh, teaching. All right. Okay, so... Uh, as we're looking at this week's video, what I want to do is to, uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to uh, re uh, relate the reading smoke to recognition prime decision making, talk about what it is and that sort of thing. Uh, but we're going to try and get right to the video so we can use that as our basis of discussion. Okay, so let's, let's uh, get started with it. Here's the building that we're looking at. Uh, this is obviously a picture when it's not on fire. Uh, but a nice two-story uh, single-family residence, and here's a picture from the video uh, and the fire. So um, as we start this, I really want to put a shout out to Chief Decker, uh, Chief David Decker with the Newark, Ohio Fire Department. He's got a great uh, set, sets of videos on his page. I'll put that in the links for the show notes, and it was on the link for the SBSK Facebook post as well. Uh, but I want to shout out to him. I uh, got some new subscriber this, subscribers this week, too. Uh, Eric Dryman and American Forge, welcome aboard. Hope you're able to uh, do it with us today. And uh, the Purple Goblins, I'm going to look at you a little bit later, see what Purple Goblins means. But uh, welcome to the um, web, webcast here. All right, so uh, the chief has, you'll see when you go to his site, he has some really good videos, and he's very often just uh, videoing from the car, which I think is great. Uh, really stable stuff, but uh, in this case, he's going to do the 360. And as we did on the video uh, that we posted, that I posted on SBSK, we're going to go through without audio. And um, his initial size up is is a fire on floor one and floor two in the back of this house. And we're going to go through on the 360 and take a look. See, it's already part way around now. We got the cellar door right here. You can see there's smoke in there. 
Uh, crews already have that open. They're getting it open right there. And then you can see along here, you can see smoke. I'm going to back it up because it's a little easier to see when you're watching it live. But watch right along that edge of the of the building there. See smoke coming out right at the ground level. That's a really good shot right there. The pretty good velocity here, pretty good velocity here. And remember, this stuff's having to push out, right? These aren't just open spaces. Uh, these are uh, mostly closed gaps, uh, holes in, or seams in the walls and stuff where the insulation isn't that tight. Stuff's getting through. So it's white smoke. There's not a high volume of it, but it's got some reasonable velocity coming out of there. And so as he's going around, you can see that right there. And we'll keep going forward. Get a little more view there. We come around front again, pretty pretty good coming out of there, not a lot of volume. Color is white, which we would expect to see uh, for a couple of reasons. One, could just be steam. Two, could be that that smoke's getting filtered as it's going through, site, like the insulation or the tight spaces. Really good view there of that smoke coming out. Oh, look, it's it's going sideways three, four feet before it's going vertical. So it's coming out with some pretty good force. And you definitely can see there up on floor two, you definitely have a fire working up here. And there on uh, the basement, floor one and floor two, as Chief Decker is going to come around and we're going to get a nice view of the house. Again, you can see down here, we're going to make a point of this because later, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you look down in the same area as the chief moves uh, to the command vehicle. A clear indication here. So uh, once we have a basement fire, we want to do is make sure that we're um, keeping track of where the companies are. And so if we if we if like in in the Seattle Fire Department, I worked there. Uh, we changed our tactics for basement fire and said, hey, we're going to attack fire at grade wherever possible. There's fire in the basement. We need to attack that before we start sending crews to the floor above. Then uh, in this case, we would work vertically. So we go basement fire, fire on floor one, fire on floor two. Right? That's how I, we would have done it uh, in Seattle when I worked there, which was a, a change from when I first came in, which is where we would actually go in on the floor above and some uh, examination, scientific examination of basement fires from NIST and UL uh, change those tactics because we don't want to be in the flow path. Uh, let me go to my, um, this this picture right here, this is just my screen saver today, but I pulled up on it because this is, this is actually a video or a photo of a basement fire that we had. We're almost lost two firefighters in the Seattle Fire Department. This is in the early 2000s. We we're still going in on the floor above and trying to make it down the stairs. And, and uh, um, they were lucky to make it out of this situation. All right, let's get back to the video, though. All right, so let's go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you listen to Chief Decker. On his arrival, he said fire on floor two and fire on floor one. We're going to listen to him as he goes around and does his 360 this time. And you'll, you'll hear his identification of the basement fire and then a change of tactics, which is really solid command presence. Fire on the first floor of the back of the house. We're now conducting a 360. Command all units, 360 is complete. It appears that there's a uh, set of fires. There's a fire in the basement, a fire on the first floor, and a fire on the second floor. Command the fire before make our working fire. So a really nice job there by the chief of uh, adjusting the tactics, his initial read, one thing, and then he comes back, he sees the smoke from the basement, and he rearranges and says, hey, we're going to put the first line in the basement, then floor one, then floor two, right? So attacking uh, the lowest level first and then working our way vertically. All right, so uh, why do I make such a big deal? I, I, I couldn't track for sure, but I think there was like seven or eight or nine times in the SBI's Cape Post on Thursdays that I made a point of predicting. And, and the reason is uh, I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint. This is actually stuff from my tactical decision-making class that I also offer. 
we're making um, decisions on the far ground. They're called recognition prime decisions. And what that means is that uh, it's, uh, other, other ways to think about it are the slide tray or your gut feeling. When you look at a fire, you look at a situation, uh, you're taking it in quickly and then making a decision quickly. But what's actually going on in your head is you have the situation that you're looking at, let's say this house fire that we have going. And um, initially the chief, when he was looking at it, he said, hey, there's a fire on floor one and floor two, and there's a tactical plan for that, right? Fire on floor one, fire on floor two means that we're gonna do this. Uh, this is what it means to me in a single family residence. And then um, I'm gonna have the crews do this. I'm gonna lay an infantry quarter line to floor one, for example or primary search beginning on floor one, whatever the case may be. So what happens as he goes around and starts doing his 360 is he sees different cues, right? And those different cues tell him that there's a fire in the basement. So we can look at the cues that he's taken into consideration, volume, velocity, density, color. Okay, so you see how this BVDC goes together with uh, decision making in order to understand the problem we have now and then make some prediction about what the problem is going to be later. But also for uh, you firefighters that are going inside, it's important to look at what do I see from the volume, velocity, density, color outside? What do I anticipate the conditions being inside, right? Now, they're not always going to line up, but the, the closer they line up, the better it is for us. And as they, if they start to diverge, if your expectation of what it's going to be like is not in alignment with what it's actually like when you're inside, you want to do, spend some time thinking about, okay, what's going on here that I didn't see initially, right? So if we go back to this, this is how you make decisions in high pressure, time limited environments, right? There's a lot of other descriptors of the types of decisions, but just the fact that you have in, uh, limited information and limited time, and these are critical decisions uh, for people's lives and for their safety, uh, their recognition primes. And the way that works is to see the cues, understand the pattern. Okay, so that's just a little review. He saw the cues, it indicated one pattern, one set of access scripts. He goes, wait a minute, here's a different cue. There's smoke coming from the basement. That's a different pattern. Now we're into a basement fire and we maybe have a different action script than when we had before. And so you start changing up the plan if that's if that's what needs to be done, right? Um, so I wanted to uh, talk about my own experience a little bit too. Here's a still a photo of fire I had when I was a deputy chief in Seattle and I was in charge of the operations division. And uh, what was really uh, great about this fire is the first in company identified right away was a basement fire. And you can see that here because there is uh, smoke coming out along this edge. Now, uh, what's the volume and color here? Well, the volume is lower and the color is white. If we look here, we have significantly more volume and the color's dark gray to black. Okay, so this is where we want to look and say, okay, what are the keys telling us and what are we going to do about it? And what I'd say is, generally speaking, for our department, we want to fight fire at the lowest level first, and then we can also recognize that this is the top of the chimney. This window was not originally broken out, but somebody broke it out for ventilation purposes uh, before we had good fire attack going. And so now we have a chimney effect where we have a fire in the basement going up the stairs through floor one and then coming out this uh, very big picture window here. Now, um, so it's a pretty good indicator of uh, we have a basement fire and we're getting ready to attack the fire in the basement, but we probably would have been preferable in this situation not to not to ventilate that window until we had fire attack underway, right? And, and not every fire ground goes perfect, uh, but uh, just an example from my own career of where uh, we looked at the fire in, in the initial and in, in the, this case, the fire, the company officer, the first thing company officer correctly identified a basement fire uh, because they were able to see this smoke uh, coming out of the basement. All right, let's get back to video though. I know video is king and um, certainly I love using video in my classes and we watch a lot of it. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna play this along. You can see pretty good velocity here. Um, if we if we had a chance, what we could do is, is check the velocities from 
this side and the Bravo side where the chief went along and maybe even along the Delta and the higher the velocity, right? So if we have one of the uh, shortcuts for reading smoke is if we have the same or similar openings, wherever the higher velocity, right? The highest velocity from the most restricted opening is going to tell you you're going to be closer to the fire. So we'd want to, if we, if we could, we could compare the relative velocities of these two um, or three places where smoke com is coming out and get a pretty good read on where the fire is in the basement. Now, in this case, it wouldn't make tons of difference because it looks like there's only a single access uh, to the basement or the cellar here in this case, depending on how you how your terminology goes there. Uh, probably only one way to get in. But we can see here as the chief moves around that the velocity and the volume and the color have changed significantly over the last couple of minutes. Last minute, half two minutes. Okay, look at how much more uh, smoke, the increase in volume, increase in velocity, there's a lot more turbulence. It's much darker in color, right? Darker here and still lighter here. And notice, uh, like that picture I showed you, we also have a opening uh, up above. And if the stairway is open, now we have a pretty good chimney effect going. Uh, but they also indicate they have a fire on floor one, right? So there's a lot going on here, but significantly higher volume and velocity and a really good color change on this Bravo side as the chief comes around. Take another look at it. Yeah, look at that. Okay, but they've stretched the line and they're got fire attack underway. They're going into that uh, basement and um, they're going to be doing fire attack down here. So predict for yourself, what would happen with the smoke as they started their fire attack? What would you expect to see? Well, you'd expect to see a decrease in um, all four attributes. Volume, velocity, density, color should all go down. Might have a, a temporary increase uh, with the initial application of water, but the color change should be dramatic. And as you can see here, we've already, just as the chief's coming back, we've already got some color change going on with the fire attack in the basement. Okay. All right. So let's let's go fast forward as this as this fire develops, and you guys can see this um, when you uh, have some time. You can go watch the whole video on YouTube. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. We're just focusing on the basement fire. We're going to move up here to like the five minute mark of the video uh, since we started. What I want you to look at here as we look at this is, is look to see, remember earlier, there was smoke coming out along this space. We knew as we walked back from the uh, Bravo side, there was a fire attack underway. And now we can read that smoke from the basement and see what impact it's having. In fact, you can see here that the volume and velocity is virtually gone from the basement fire by just by the time the chief walks around the front door, right? So that means if, if I'm the IC here, I would think to myself, hey, the risk went way down in the basement over the last two minutes. We had pretty significant velocity of, of gray to black smoke coming out along the Bravo side with smoke coming out here on the Alpha. And now we've got basically no smoke on the Alpha side Take a quick peek on the Bravo, but it's just going to confirm what I already know. The fire attack crew in the basement is is killing it. Those guys are killing it. And in this case, they even reported that they had order conditions, right? So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, as we go along here, there's a lot of work to be done. And it uh, looks like we have, uh, um, you know, the, the pattern that we see, the volume, velocity, density, color, and as we look at this thing and as, as we make our assessment, and then we want to update that as we get new information. And we're particularly looking for information that contradicts or counteracts what we thought was going on, right? We want to look for things that are telling us, hey, that's what you thought is not what it is, right? Things that confirm are good, but things that, you know, make you think a little bit would be even better. All right. Here we go. Um, I wanted to thank again, thank Chief Decker and the Newark, Ohio Fire Department. I'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, today we're talking about predicting and then updating your prediction, right, with an ongoing assessment, looking at volume, velocity, density, color. And uh, as we go along here, if you want to uh, hit me up on the comments or 
send me an email. Feel free to get a hold of me. Uh, like I said, we'll be out. In, I'll be out teaching in Palm Coast relatively soon, and uh, got a class up at Island County in in Washington, and we got some more classes on the way that um, we can talk about later. Hey, we're always trying to get better, and we're always looking to be a craftsman. We want to approach firefighting as a craft, and uh, whether you're a novice apprentice journeyman or um, you're working on being a craftsman, let's uh, keep it rolling. Okay, thanks everybody. This was really fun. Hope to see you uh, ne next week and on the SBSK Facebook post for reading.